What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Layout tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna create our first floor plan from our house model that we've been working on the last couple weeks. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to set our model up to take it into layout, as well as how to get our viewport into layout so that we can create our first plan. So if you're interested in more information on this process, we do a really deep dive on the whole thing from a step-by-step -step standpoint in the Sketch SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course. So the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course is a course I put together to really give you a step-by-step a -step detailed instruction on how exactly to create plans from SketchUp and layout. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to get our views set up and get our viewport into layout. And so as of right now, the way that we've set this up, and I've gone through and I've added like furniture to this, but the way we've set this up is we've got an overall working view for level one we've got an overall working view for level two right now and you can fly around those but they don't really look like plans yet um, so what we need to do is we need to create a couple views that allow us to create our plans and so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a top-down view inside of SketchUp of the viewport that we want to send to layout to create our plans from and so the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to create a top view just like this. And so we're gonna take this top view and we're gonna center it on our screen. And so right now there's a couple different issues with this, right? So if we were to take this and send it directly over to layout right now, you'd have a few problems. So the first problem and probably the biggest problem is this isn't an exact straight up and down view, right? So it's a perspective view, meaning that everything kind of goes to a vanishing point like this. So it's all going to a perspective point right here. Well, the problem with that is because of that, we're going to have problems getting this to scale. And so the first thing we need to do is get a true up and down view inside of our model. And so the way that we can do that is by adjusting our camera settings so that we're in parallel projection view. So if you go up to camera and click on parallel projection, what that's going to do is that's going to remove the perspective from the drawings. So now this is straight up and down. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this centered in my view. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna right click in here and I'm gonna click on add. And what I've done is I've created a scene that's showing this view that we set up right here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move that to the right. So I'm gonna keep all of my um, floor plan views together. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna right click on this and I'm gonna rename this FP underscore L1. So that means floor plan level one. So now we can get back to this at any point and we can shift to our working view that's in perspective and then back to this floor plan level one view just by clicking on this view right here. And so we still have a problem though and the problem is if you look at this you can't actually tell where any of the doors or windows are. And the reason for that is because you're seeing these walls from a top view. But what we need to do is we need to take a section cut through this building so that we can actually see our doors and windows. And so the way that we're going to do that is just by going into our large tool set over here or you can also go to I believe it's tools section plane and what we want to do is we want to add a section plane so I'm just going to click in here and I'm going to add a section plane notice how when I do this and I mouse over this this will kind of inference to whatever plane you put it over well in this situation what I want to do is I want to put this in here so that it's on the blue axis so straight up and down and you can also if you want tap the up arrow key to lock this to a plane so you can see how right now this is kind of jumping around but if I tap the up arrow key then it won't do that anymore and what I want to do for right now is I want to put this section plane somewhere about the middle of my doors and windows so it doesn't have to be exact we can adjust this in a second but what we want is we want this to take a section plane through our building and so notice how when you first do this and I usually turn this off but I left it on for right here for right now um, what this is is this is our section plane um, this is where we can set our section plane label so in this case I could label this something like L1 floor plan or something like that and you can also set the symbol that's going to be inside of the section plane indicator I'm just gonna set that to 1 and click on OK so what that does is that creates this big section plane. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one. I don't know why I have that plane in here anyway. Um, so 
what what that's done is that's created a section plane in here that's basically cutting all the way through my building. And so you can see how now, if we look at this and we look at it from a plan view standpoint, it's actually giving us a cut through our doors and our windows, most of them anyway. And uh, so we can now see where those doors and windows are just by looking at them. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna move this just a little bit. And so that's one thing about your active section plane is you can left click on it and then use the move tool to move it up and down. So you can see I can move this up and down in order to kind of adjust this. Well, what I'm doing in this situation is I'm going through and I'm taking the section cut so that it shows through this window as well. And so we're gonna go back to our straight up and down view right here hit the space key in order to deselect this and then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna update my scene right here it's asking if we want to do anything with our style changes for right now let's go ahead and just um, for right now we'll just say update the selected style and so what we've done is we've come through here and we've taken a um, we've taken a section plane through our building. And so you're gonna notice that things are getting a little bit weird over here with our cabinets because we're getting a section cut through our cabinets. So you could either take that section plane and move it down so you can't see those cabinets anymore, or you could also take these upper cabinets and put them on their own layer. Um, there's a few different ways that you could do that. In this situation, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them just for right now um, so that we can keep moving forward in this tutorial. But um, we may take a look at these a little bit later. Um, I do like that this kind of indicates where our upper cabinets are. Um, but one thing you might notice right now is you're gonna notice that at the moment, the section plane is still visible, right? And we don't necessarily want to see the section plane. We just want to use it to create a cut through our building. And so what we can do is we can go up into our, let's see, I believe it's our view settings and uncheck the box for section planes so that this section plane doesn't show up anymore. So it's basically hidden. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna update it. And we'll go ahead and update our selected style for right now. We're gonna talk about styles in a second. Um, but what we've done is we've created our first floor plan view. One thing you might be noticing though is it seems very dark. And the reason for this is because the style that we're using is adjusting the way that this looks. And so we set our style inside of SketchUp to set the way that our plans are going to look inside of layout. So for example, I've got a gray background, my axes are showing up, um, this is filled in with kind of a dark color. It's not necessarily what I would consider ideal for a floor plan. And so what we wanna do is we wanna go make some adjustments to the style that's in here so that our plan looks a little bit different. So if we click on this drop down, for example, and I'm gonna go ahead and select the option for um, default styles. So that's got some decent styles in here that we can use. We can select a different style to get a different look inside of our drawings. So for example, there's a number of these already in here. There's a construction documentation style. There's a hidden line style that we might use for more line work. There's a shaded with textures as well. So usually what I do is I select one of these as kind of a building block and then I make some adjustments so that my plans look the way that I want them to look. So what I've done is I've selected the, let's go with the construction documentation style for right now. So what that one gives us is that one gives us, instead of a fill on our walls in our section cut, it just kind of leaves the colors as is. It also leaves our textures in here, or at least leaves them shaded. And so what I want to do now is I want to go make a few changes to this style. So I'm gonna go into my edit tab and I'm gonna go into my modeling settings and I'm gonna turn off my model axes. So I don't want the axes showing up in my plan. So I'm gonna turn those off. Um, I'm also going to uncheck this box for section fill. So if you put in section fill, basically what this does is this puts a shade in here wherever a section cut is intersecting with things in your model. So you could use this to make your walls like black or something like that. And your section fill needs to be turned on in order for it to do that. But notice how you can adjust the section fill to get a different effect in here. Well, in this situation, I'm just gonna turn off my section fill. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn down my section line width to just one. So notice how what this does is this uses your section line or your section cut, and then anywhere your section cut intersects with your models, it makes your lines thicker. We can play around with this a little bit more in the future, but I'm gonna leave it as is for right now.
Then I'm also going to go in here. I'm going to set my face settings. I'm going to make sure those are set to shaded with textures. And I'm going to go into my edge settings and I'm going to turn profiles maybe down to one. And we could also look at maybe turning profiles off if we wanted to. That's basically where SketchUp thickens some lines in here. It's really only affecting this furniture for right now, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but so what we've done is we've now set this floor plan view up so that um, so that we can see where our doors are, we can see where our windows are, and then everything else is giving us kind of a straight up and down plan view. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to update this style with my changes. So this is basically how we save these changes is just by clicking right here. And then the last thing I do before I take this to layout is I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to update this scene. And so what that means is that scene is now saved. So now if I fly around or I go back to a working view or whatever, I can always get this scene again. And so now we're going to take this scene and we're going to export it to layout. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either go into layout and go ahead and open it up, or you can just go up to file and you can do a um, send to layout. And before you do that, you want to make sure that you save any changes that you've made. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And then once it's done saving, we're going to go up to file and we're going to click on the button for send to layout. And when we do that, what SketchUp's going to do is it's going to open up layout. So you can see how layout is currently opening up. And the first thing this is going to do, and I'm going to click on remind me later for this. The first thing this is going to do is it's going to ask us to choose a template. And so you can either choose some of these built in paper. There's also some options in here for sheets that already have title blocks on them. If you want to use those, or if you've already created a template, which I have, you can also select one of those. So for me, I have an architectural D template where I've gone through and I've adjusted everything so that it has my title block. If you're creating a lot of plans, I would recommend creating a template um, for your different kinds of drawings. So in the course, for example, we create a, de a details page, um, a project data page, as well as a, as a template for our regular sheets. And so these are all um, sheets that I've created inside of the course, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the architectural D template that I have. And that's basically setting the sheet template that your drawing is going to be set in on. And so we're going to look at this and you can see how what this does is this takes our viewport or our current view and it drops it into layout as a viewport. And so one way to look at layout is basically what layout does is it creates your plan view by taking any of the views that you've created inside of SketchUp and putting them on this sheet. So it's almost like taking a straight up and down photo of your SketchUp model and putting it in here, except that it can, it can be updated as you update your plans. But for example, now if I look at this, I can click on this viewport and I can move it around on my sheet. So you can see how I can use this in order to adjust this and place this on my sheet wherever I want it to be. And so let's take a look at our SketchUp model section on the right hand side of our page. So you can see how when I drop this down, this tells me what model is being referenced here. And it also tells me what scene is being referenced. There's some things about the rendering in here that I'm not getting too far into in this video. But then it also gives us an option down below to adjust our scale. And so notice how it'll show where your current scale sits um, between the scales that are built into layout. So for example, if I was to click on 3 eighths of an inch equals one foot, this is going to adjust this plan view so that this is scaled to 3 eighths of an inch equals one foot. Um, alternatively, I could also set this to a half inch equals one foot and you can see how this gets bigger. So you can set your scale over here. And I want to note that this little checkbox right here is really important. A lot of people struggle with this. And so what this is, is this is basically a button that says, all right, if I click and drag the right hand corner, this viewport is going to retain its scale. So if you uncheck this box and then you like move this around and you accidentally adjust something, you're going to notice that what this is doing is this is adjusting our current scale in here. So I am no longer to scale because I clicked and dragged this right hand corner. And so I'm just going to do a control Z to undo that. And I just want to note you usually want to make sure that you've checked this box for preserve scale on resize. And so one other thing I guess we can talk about a little bit is I want to talk about how to lock these layers. Um, because locking your layers is going to be really important because a lot of people have trouble with stuff jumping around inside of layout. 
Well, the reason for that is because they have a bunch of layers sitting in here and they haven't locked anything. And so every time you click in here, you might accidentally pick up this viewport and move things around and then things are no longer aligned and it just gets kind of messy. So what we want to do is we currently have, or I currently have a number of different layers set up in here. And these work like layers in Photoshop work. And what that means is that means that all of these layers are stacked on top of each other. So you bring multiple things in and place them on top of each other. And when you do that, um, that's how you adjust that's how you adjust and show different things in here. So for example, if you had your floor plan viewport above your annotations or your dimensions, then this would probably block out those annotations or dimensions. The, so the things that are on the top are going to get stacked on top over here. The things that are on the bottom may get hidden by other things that are also in your viewport. So just be aware that the order of these are in is going to affect the way that things show up over here in your viewport. But specifically what I want to focus on for right now is I want to take this viewport that I brought in and I want to put it on a floor plan viewport layer. So the way that I can do that is if you don't have one, you can click on the plus button right here and you want to make the layer floor plan viewport well then once you've got it scaled and everything else I want to right click on it and click move to layer and click on floor plan viewport and so when I do that what I can do is now I can lock that layer by clicking on the little lock right here well now I can no longer click on this and move it around so because I can no longer click on this and move it around that means I can't accidentally adjust the way that or the location of this viewport, right? So I can't accidentally move everything around anymore because I've got this locked. And so I recommend trying to keep things locked as much as possible. So unless you're actively working on something, I would say go ahead and keep that locked. And so I also like to have a layer in here for dimensions. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that. And what I wanna do is I just wanna come in here and I just wanna add a dimension. So I'm gonna create a dimension from here to here. And you're gonna notice that that comes in here at the wrong units. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my dimension style and I wanna set this so that it's at architectural. And I'm gonna set my precision to we'll say a 16th. So I'm not sure how I got my window to exactly that size, but that's the dimension that I have in here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a couple more dimensions just by clicking and clicking you can actually, so I'm just gonna set a couple dimensions in here just like this. And then because it doesn't seem to wanna to retain this, I am going to use the, and so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the style picker right here and I'm gonna select this. And I'm gonna click over here in order to adjust the style of these other dimensions as well. And so you can see how what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start adding dimensions inside of our drawing using these tools. And I'm putting those on the dimensions layer. So again, the same thing, I can't accidentally click and drag those. I can just take those dimensions, I can lock them just like this. So that's kind of an overview of how you would set up your first sheet inside of layout. We will talk more about other principles in future videos in this series, but if you're looking for more in-depth training on this, make sure to check out the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, the link in the notes down below. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Um, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.